Stephen, I think LeBron's legacy is still in some jeopardy tonight. Now, I agree with your point that you've been making, I guess, for the last two weeks, which is it's not in nearly the disastrous peril that it was after the Heat lost game one of the finals last year in Oklahoma City, and then, of course, rebounded to win four straight. But in all honesty, and I think in fairness, his play so far, LeBron's, in this finals has been spotty at best. I can make a case that it's been more down than up. We've had some high points. We've had some low points. I've heard him on this show referred to as being afraid to shoot by Stephen Jackson, who we had on in San Antonio, of course, recently an expert. And you said, well, that's Stephen Jackson. He's not playing the finals. But I heard that word, and you have used the word tentative to describe LeBron's play several times on this show. That shocks me. We're talking about the four-time MVP being referred to as afraid to shoot and a little tentative. So I, I look at the bigger picture and I say, well, despite the explosion that he gave us, the way no human can give us right now in the NBA for that seven-minute stretch of the fourth quarter the other night that included two dunks and four driving layups, in the end of the game, he had two shocking turnovers, the last few seconds of regulation, and one in the last minute of overtime. He missed two of his three three-point attempts, attempts at the end of regulation. The first one didn't even hit the rim. And that became, you know, flipped up in the air and went back to him. And then, to his credit, undying credit, he hit the second three. That was a big shot in that game. And then, of course, he missed the tying three with eight seconds left that went to Ray Allen finally through Chris Bosh and forced the overtime. But for the big picture, from the three-point range now in this finals, LeBron James is seven for 29 from three. That's 29 percent. And outside the paint in the three losses, he's six for 29. Not very good. Not LeBron-esque from what we saw in the regular season this year when he much improved his outside shooting. So he needs to close this deal tonight, obviously, or he will be in, in jeopardy, as Chris Broussard said a couple days ago on the show, of becoming this era's Wilt Chamberlain. And for our younger viewers, Wilt was considered the most supremely talented player of his era, but he didn't always back it up in the finals. Mm -hmm. He went two and five in the finals. A lot of that had to do with Bill Russell. But LeBron, if he lost tonight, would go to one and three in the finals and would be on path to become Will Chamberlain. I don't disagree with most of your points, but that doesn't negate the fact that you're being a bit nitpicky. Now, let's dissect this and break this down. Number one, LeBron James has never been a jump shooter. I recall in this series and in the last series, Ray Allen having problems shooting the basketball. What, I recall, in series before? Yes. I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter. If th that's his signature. That's his M.O., and he still struggled, okay? It's about the bottom line. If LeBron James loses these finals, then obviously that's not good. If he loses his finals because he's played awful, then we can talk to me about legacy. But at the same time, if this dude comes out to play and he's got 32, 11, and 10 like he did in game mm -hmm. six, but Dwayne Wade don't show up and Chris Bosh don't show up and suddenly Mike Miller and Ray Allen can't hit perimeter shots and Mario Chalmers reverts back to a few games ago as opposed to looking the way that he's looked last game, then we've got a different discussion. I'm not sitting there trying to give LeBron James a pass. He has to perform, and I get all of that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we're not a bit extreme and our nitpicking. Like, for example, last year, LeBron James averaged over 30 on 50% shooting from the field in the NBA Finals, and you were talking about his lack of production from the perimeter. But if you shot 50% overall, I don't care where you're shooting the ball from. Well, I gave he, him huge credit. But, I lauded but, him for posting up Kevin right, Durant right. in the last but, four but, games. But, but when I say nitpicking is, in the end, if those numbers are those numbers and it's 50% shooting, I'm not going to look at the fact, in the end, that he shot 30% from, from the perimeter, but he shot 80% from the paint. Uh -huh. I'm going to look at the fact that it was 50% because that's really what it comes down right. to. And that's what I mean by nitpicking. In the end, you are experimenting within the throws of 48 minutes and you're doing whatever it takes to get it done. Sometimes you go out there and you shoot your J. If it's clicking, you continue to shoot it. If it misses, you start looking for alternatives. That's what he did in game six. If he's willing to do that, 
then I'm good with it. My problem would have been if he had kept doing the same things he did in the first three quarters, and then even if they won, I would have been like, what's the matter with you? You got to figure out a different remedy. But I applaud the fact going three for 12, being virtually non-existent on the offensive end of the floor for three quarters. This dude sat up there, looked at the 10-point deficit, recognized the championship was on the line, and said, y'all move out the way. I'm, this is my show now. I've had enough. And he went down low. Whatever it takes. All I want to see from a champion of his caliber, of his magnitude as an individual player, is the attitude that I'm going down swinging, and whatever it takes, I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you know what? He missed those jump shots, those Okay, what, what would you have said if Ray Allen's three from the corner had lipped out? I would have said those two turnovers mm -hmm. in the last couple of minutes cost the Miami Heat big time. LeBron, that's on you because that's a game-deciding thing Thank that you. transpired. I would not have ignored what he did with the 16 points in the fourth quarter, I would, have, but I would have brought up what happened in those last three minutes because that determined the outcome. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you know what? You were 3 of 12 for three quarters. You finished with a triple-double. Oh, I'm not going to focus on that as much as I would have focused on the last two minutes because the last two minutes decided the outcome. Had Ray Allen missed that jump shot, you could make a legitimate argument. LeBron cost you that title with the mistakes he made in the final two minutes. That's what I'm saying. Because to me, that's not nitpicking. Okay. That's so, significant so if, stuff. If your pick is correct, if the Spurs prevail tonight, how will you look big picture at LeBron's resume one and three in the NBA Finals? I, first of all, I would consider it one and two. Because I never counted Cleveland all against right. San Antonio, because we all knew that was one on five. We knew he didn't have anything in Cleveland. It was a, it was Come on, an. Damon Jones wasn't it, anything. Let's not go there, please. That's my boy. But come hey, on now. Damon. I mean, I, I'm just, Hi, I'm, ju I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Damon's offended. I, I, I'm, right? just, I'm just saying to you, Cleveland didn't have much. We knew it was a one. It was one on five, and it was LeBron James. We, we just, we were just happy he got there. We were all depressed. We had to be in Cleveland for it, but we were happy he got there. Okay. So when you look at Dallas, you were supposed to win that NBA Finals. Right. Dirk Nowitzki took y'all out. The coaching of Rick Carlisle took y'all out. Tyson Chandler being on that front line backing up Dirk mm -hmm. and those boys yeah. helped you win the championship. But LeBron and D-Wade, who was healthy at that time, along with Bosh, you were supposed to win the title. Last year against Oklahoma City, they did what they were mm -hmm. supposed to do. This year we'll see. So to me, I'd look at it as one and two.